All right, we're live. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and start. Oh, uh, the developer meeting have started six. They do? I'm technically That's what I said. Life. They do? They do? You always do that, and everyone's like, really? Yeah, they're the same. Why not just leave <laughs> it? Like, developer topics require more time. <laughs> Well, developers are tardy. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, I'm the only one that's tardy, though. <laughs> I know, we have people here like, well, I thought they were here an hour early, but apparently they were only here half an hour early. <laughs> For extra networking. Mm -hmm. Well, there's tables out here, Carol, if you need your extra 15 minutes. <laughs> and free soda. Although it looks like you're set. <laughs> Um, so welcome to uh, the Arizona North Valley Developers Meetup. This will be our third Developers Meetup here. Um, if you're coming here just, if you're a little new and you're coming here, some of this will be over your head, um, but you're welcome. And you're welcome to absorb in as much developer knowledge as you can take. Um, if you need uh, access to Wi-Fi, um, it's all up here on the screen. If you're going to tweet anything about today's presentation, use the hashtag WPAZ. And if you want to follow along, all of my slides are available online. Um, you can use a QR code or type that in your web browser. Um, it's also public, so if you just search Google presentations for North Valley Arizona developer June, you'd probably find it. Uh, if you want to follow me, um, I'm Seth Karstens. This is my Twitter handle. Right? Handle? Okay. Um, so you're welcome to follow me there. And here's the agenda for tonight. Um, 15 minutes ago, we started. Uh, <coughs> webcam setup, welcome to announcements. So we'll go through the welcome really fast, and then Betsy will do a few announcements, and I have a few of my own. Um, and then we'll get started. Uh, we'll, we'll go around the room and meet everybody. Um, I see a few familiar faces, but I see some new faces too, so I look forward to meeting you all. Why don't, let's see, why don't you do your announcements before I dive in? My announcements? Yes. Well, we're not going to do introductions? After. Oh, okay. Um, Unless you're not ready, I guess I can do introductions now. Um, so this is Betsy. Hi, everybody. I'm Betsy. Um, is that an announcement? <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess with me. Um, so I just saw uh, um, we're kind of planning out the next few months of, of meetups. And um, as Seth kind of mentioned, we um, are trying to do a developer meetup at once a quarter. Um, but the rest of the meetups are generally um, you know, more um, a mix of, of content for uh, users and developers and beginning and and intermediate and um, with bits of advanced sprinkled in. Um, so we've been kind of coming up with um, topic ideas based on requests and, and suggestions. And um, I've got a few topics over the next few months that I'm um, looking for someone to volunteer to present on. Um, everybody here is welcome to present. If you've got a little bit of knowledge, then you probably have something you can teach. Um, so let me just put out a few of the topics that we um, have had interest in but need a speaker on. One of them is uh, talking about um, Google and Google integrations with WordPress. So um, it could be something around analytics and webmaster tools. Um, there's been interest in Google authorship. Um, you know, anything in the Google realm with respect to WordPress. Um, there's been some interest uh, in. So if anyone here has knowledge in that area and, and might be interested in putting together a, you know, maybe a 20 to 45 minute presentation on the topic, um, talk to me or Seth. Um, if you want to do it next month, talk to me. That's your opinion. Yeah. But we already have, I think we're pretty well set for next month. Um, next month, what we'll, would we'll be having a presentation on <coughs> Cloudflare, DNS management, and caching. 
um, and we uh, may be looking for someone to present their favorite plugin. This is a, like a 10 to 20 minute spot where you get to present your favorite or a favorite WordPress plugin and just talk about it, demo it, show it, um, what's cool about it. So anybody's welcome to make suggestions and um, and just get up there and talk about that. Let us know what you want to present on. Um, we're not definite. <laughs> so if you're interested, let me know. Um, we have had uh, well, there's interest in having someone do that sort of presentation on an <laughs> event plugin on a good events plugin. So if you use or love a particular events plugin and want to demo that for everybody. Uh, please let us know. And editorial calendar, um, edit flow, there's a couple of plugins that um, help with editorial calendar if you've got experience and, and are willing to um, to get up there uh, and talk about one of those, we would all appreciate it. Um, next month we're going to continue our series on hosting, um, WordPress hosting options that we started a couple of months back. And so we'll have a presentation next month on either SiteGround or Pagely, I'm not sure which we'll have next month. Um, <clears throat> if you're interested in the other things, we've already had a demo of the GoDaddy WordPress platform and WP Engine, and those are um, they should be in the uh, um, on the YouTube, and, you know, yeah. yeah, on the YouTube channel or on AZWordPress.com. Yeah, and. Um, and then there's also been interest in having a, um, well, I, I don't know, we got mixed reaction last month when I mentioned we may have that it, we may have a, a talk on WordPress multi-site. Um, so I don't know, if, is there interest on multi-site? And is there a speaker on multi-site? I could probably talk on it now. Now you could, yeah. We just we just uh, delved into it this, this week for the first time. Or maybe a panel. A panel? A panel would be great. A panel of people who have used multi-site, so we could kind of, yeah. and maybe somebody else to ask questions in the data pressnomics, right, where mm -hmm. you get a few oh, people yeah. that a have moderator. used multi-site, and then some sort of moderator to like ask questions. We, we did that here on um, uh, e-commerce, yeah. uh, and I think it worked really well because we had different perspectives, and nobody needed to be a full-on expert, just had their experiences to share. So um, yeah. we can do that for multi-site. George Warner. That suggested it. That suggested and offered to give his input into the topic. Yeah. So maybe we'll have him on a panel. Um, and anybody else want to just shout it out a good idea for a topic. for a topic? Are any of you interested in presenting? I didn't see any like everybody's <laughs> avoiding eye contact. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Look, I am. I know very, very like. I mean, I know a lot of things, but nothing very, very well or very deep. And I get up there. You all can do it. Or if you know anyone else is interested, please let us know. Yeah. All right. Otherwise, we have to hear Seth talk every right. month. Oh. I'm sure you're tired of having to say it like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's it for that announcement. Does anybody else have any other announcements about upcoming events? Do um, you want to talk about the other WordPress meetups in town and what's coming up? Sure. I'll talk about what's going up in Chandler. Um, we are booked out through November. I cannot wow. even believe. I know. It just is crazy. Great. I know. <laughs> so this coming August, or uh, sorry, July, we're going to have April Holly talk about editorial calendar and planning out your content. So oh, having a content plan. We'll She's uh, doing that in July. And then we also are having a hosting series as well. And in July, we have Flywheel coming in. Flywheel is kind of newer to the scene, so we're going to hear from Flywheel. Hosting? Mm -hmm. Hosting, yes. Okay. Flywheel hosting. Um, and then in August, we have Joe Mana presenting on email integration into your website. And um, we'll have another host presenter. In September, we have Chris Lee presenting on co uh, customer, relation customer relations management systems within WordPress, so using CRMs in WordPress. And October, we're going to have Kurt Payne doing site speed and how to optimize your site for site speed. And then in November, we're going to have uh, two sessions, one on Google Analytics and conversion tracking, and then follow that up with A-B testing. Nice. So, Who's doing that? Uh, the Google Analytics goal conversion tracking is April, and the A-B testing is John Goff. All right, maybe we'll get April here for a couple of those. You topics. should, yeah. If no one else will volunteer. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we all know how much I like to hear myself talk. <laughs> Does it bother me? <laughs> Is that all you got? That's it. Any, any other? Uh, what about the um the, yeah, the west the northwest oh, meetup? What's coming uh, up? I'm not going to be there this week. And Brandy's taking care of it, and I'm not sure what she's talking about. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we have a new host. We need to mention. Oh, we I'm sorry, not a new a sponsor. Headway oh, Themes oh, yeah. is uh -huh. sponsoring us. They are making a site because. Northwest is not lucky enough to have a nice space free. that's free, free to them free, like we free have. Space, yeah. Free space. And so Headway is making space available to the Northwest. So they're a sponsor now. You're me? Because you made me tweet when I had to do the presentation here. Hi. And he picked it up. Sponsor. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> so it looks like um, they're having a, an open forum. Is the plan? Oh, is that what mm -hmm. okay. That's what's on meetup.com. They seem to be popular, especially with the downtown boots meetup as well. Oh yeah, we need to oh, talk about yeah. that too. Um, we have on. It'll be on July first, the Business of Web meetup, which is for people who would like to own a web design development business or already do. Um, and it's mostly just roundtable discussion. Uh, we'll do a pretty loose agenda and ask what topics we want to discuss, but, but it can go in kind of any direction. So um, that's a good one, too, and that's in downtown Phoenix. Great. I don't think we have anyone else here. There's a... Oh, there's one for every week. But that was all four, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's one in Tucson, too, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's If I want Dr. Chandler, I'm not going to There's one in Tucson. <laughs> All right. Um, it's a developers meetup, and I'm hiring developers, so I figured I'd throw that out there. Uh, I'll be hiring. Why do they have to be young? <clears throat> they don't have to be legal. <laughs> I would like. Young minded. Young minded. Yeah, energetic, open minded developers. Um, yeah. They need to be young because I can't pay very much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're interested in learning how to become a, a WordPress developer, um, I have over 14 years of experience. I've trained all developers now, and I just got a new job where I get to hire a team of developers to build WordPress projects. So if you're interested in that at all, uh, please contact me. I'll probably be hiring three to four people in the next 12 months. Um, or rather, you get paid to learn how to develop in WordPress, let me know. Announcements. Uh, well, we already did a few of those, so I think we covered that. Did you know that there are WordCamps coming up? Seattle um, at the end of June. It's probably a little late to register for that. So we got Kansas City, July 12th. Um, Milwaukee, July 25th to the 27th. Wow, that's a three-day like the one in Phoenix. Um, Vancouver, not exactly in the U.S., but close, on um, July 26th, and August in Columbus. And I'll our, be speaking at that event. Yeah, that's who will be speaking there. Which one? Fort Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. Um, and then New York, New York is in August. Yeah. Those are the uh, upcoming word camps, so I figured I'd let you show them about those. Um, oh, here we go. And let's circle around and meet everyone and see how far behind I am. Uh, only seven minutes. That's not bad. Okay. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm really bad with time. Um, so there will be a time on every single slide to try and keep me on track so that you're all not here until 10 and listening to me talk. Uh, so let's go around the room. Uh, we'll start in the far back corner. Because you sat back there, I'm going to start with you. I was the long for the ride. Yeah. Cheers, with me. Um, my name is Dan. I um, this is my first meeting. So I'm right now. I'm Dan. Uh, I'm Are a you a developer? Uh, I'm not actually. I'm a systems engineer at GoDaddy. I actually work for Felix. Oh, oh cool. Okay. No, cool. Where's Felix? Um, he had he wanted to come. He had something else he had to. Uh, I think he had a birthday party or something. So you drew the short straw, right? <laughs> I actually wanted to go. He, um, I've been trying to get out, but uh, I'm the 
agenda is that the next slide file from GitHub update. I apologize, I'm actually very interested okay. in how people are using Git uh, with WordPress. So, anybody? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and Terry Fessinger. I have my own kind of freelance business. I actually, this is my second meetup. <laughs> um, so I actually do a lot of WordPress development for clients. I don't do a lot of the coding and stuff, so I routinely run into issues where I can do most all of it, but then I'll have some anomalies come up where maybe I need you know, someone that's better at coding than I am, so I'm routinely looking for people to can kind of jump in and help out here and there. So partially here to just learn more and for myself, but also in case anyone, anyone's interested in that, let me know. Awesome. I'm sure you'll find someone. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Mark Rutter. I have Rutter Marketing. I help local businesses get found online, and I'm also the host of the North Valley Meetup. West. Northwest, excuse me, Northwest Valley. This is the <laughs> North Valley, right? Yeah, we're over that way. And uh, I'm not a developer, but I'm trying to learn by osmosis of saving out. Okay. Great. I am Brian Murphy. I do some WordPress development and like consulting right now. Um, and this year because I got to talk tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he will be speaking first, so you'll hear more from Brian while I move up here. Oh, my name is Tim. I am not a WordPress developer, but I am a software engineer uh, with CLC++ experience. I uh, do mostly embedded and test systems. Uh, I'm here with uh, Joe, uh, but uh, and, and but I'm interested uh, in learning anything new. So, okay. I'm Jill Hollister. I've been developing WordPress sites for several years, but I feel like there's a lot I still need to learn. And uh, I started a new job, and uh, they now they want me to learn PHP, so to customize. You can do some of that today. Customize the WordPress. So. Cool. <laughs> you came to the last meetup, right? Yeah. Great. Uh, Mark, I've uh, just been working with WordPress for a month, working on a couple of sites. Great. And Miranda, uh, just to kind of start yes. that one too. <laughs> oh, I'll come back to you. <laughs> <laughs> we had your back. Well, don't be so invisible, though. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Brandon. I just started about a month ago learning stuff, but he's been wanting to come out for a while now and just try to learn as much as I can, different areas. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll come back. Great. My name is Justin Tucker. I do custom team development for agencies and people like that. Great. I'm Bob Smith. I'm actually on a television production company, but because I work on our own website I, and have people working on my website, actually, it's hard to walk and rebuild and revamp our whole site. I like the intelligence as though because I'm a control freak, what needs to be done because I don't have time to do it. So I just like the knowledge of what should be going into it. So this is the place to do it. Great. Back one round. I'm Dan. I'm going to come to a couple of these. It's going to be my few web terminals, which I can't go press. Awesome. My name is Rajiv Dave. I run a couple of sites for a non-profit. I run multi-site. I do PHP, etc. Okay. Right. So, Sit on the panel. <laughs> I can, but I'm here to actually see how you guys write plugins and themes for a month. And get better at it so that when my site breaks, and does something that upgraded it. And I for it easy. Yeah. Easy. Um, Okay. So. I'm with Sidney Web Development. Um, I came here for the GitHub plugin. Did you make and switch? Are you going to do it? <laughs> no, uh, we do my favorite function, so Brian's going to oh, do that. Oh, so you're going to do GitHub. And I have a specific question. Come on. No, I'm going to do that. That doesn't mean GitHub. He's going to do it. Oh, my favorite okay. function. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I have a specific question about SSH passwords. Okay. Cool. I'm sure we'll handle that. I'm Pete. I'm a brand new WordPress user. Uh, Write code and C plus C sharp. Had websites and certain types, but I'm on GoDaddy with the WordPress opportunity and moving off of another system. I thought I'd run more than that. Great. Uh, yeah, I skipped this whole front row here. People that I already know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Jeremy. Um, I've been developing in WordPress for five years, or I don't know, ever since me and Seth used to work together. 
Um, and now I uh, help run Free Up Web Studio with Carol over here, and uh, we're just a WordPress development shop. I'm Carol, the other half of Free Up Web Studio, and I've been I'm a power user of WordPress and been using WordPress for about four years. You already know Betsy, huh? Um, I'm Mara, and I am a WordPress developer, and I work with Betsy at Positive Element and Radiate WP. Yeah, we got new cards. If anybody wants, oh, I yeah, some. I brought some. You brought some? Yay! New business cards. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have 45 minutes at the end to network with everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, can you pull it up and just I move the camera around? So I want to make sure that I didn't. So. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we got a new one in the back. Uh, hi, I'm Anton. Uh, I'm not really a WordPress developer, but I have like a few WordPress sites. But mostly in my back is actually a bit to help with writing down the new one. So, what did you come to learn tonight? Uh, kind of whatever you guys know. I, mean, like, I don't think WordPress is an idea that I'm going to put it in what I want to, but it's kind of useful for what we're working with other clients that I have to buy. Okay. So we're set. Webcam looks okay. Uh, oh well, if you go too far that way, no, other way. There, perfect. Okay. Cool. Back. Great. So now that we met everyone, we are going to transition into my favorite function, and Brian is going to come up and present these. Let me switch to screen share. Wow. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> You're set. No, it's not. Um, you don't see it? You got to click on it. It's because the mic's off. There you go. Here we go. So my favorite functions. This is a part of the meetup where we just go through one or two or um, functions. I uh, have these four here because they're a family of functions that all kind of go together. And they are to um, get JavaScript into your site through a plugin. And when you're first starting out with WordPress, you might start by just going to the theme and maybe uh, inserting a script tag in the head. Um, not very good. You shouldn't do that. Um, and then from that point, you might play around and, and uh, get into your function.php. But if you are writing either a Plugin that's kind of a feature plugin that does a lot of stuff. You might want to have your own JavaScript that goes with that, or sometimes you just want to add a little code that's independent of the themes because when you're with the plugins, then if someone switches themes on you, then the code stays active. So these are the four functions we'll go through. The first two are really the uh, big hitters here. Um, when you want to have WordPress find your, your scripts, uh, uh, the first thing you should do is register your script with WordPress. Um, and you do that with the WP register script function. And it takes a whole lot of parameters here. Um, and the first two are the required parameters. You start by giving it a handle. And a handle is just a, a string with, that's a unique identifier for your script. Um, so like everything in WordPress, you should prefix it um, so that you don't cause conflict conflicts with other things, and and that's the way that you keep your own namespacing. Hopefully, you guys have seen that, but I'll show that later in the demo, too. Uh, the source uh, the, is the next parameter there. It uh, contains the URL to the script. Um, it needs the URL and not the file path here, because it's going to use that to insert it into the web page itself, so that it can be called uh, directly in your browser can get it. Um, the next one is your array of dependencies. And this here can be null uh, by default, or you can pass it an array of strings. So if you have some JavaScript code you want to bring in to your plugin, and say it depends on jQuery, then um, jQuery is actually built into WordPress. So you can say this depends on jQuery, so that when WordPress goes through all the different things it's trying to do and assemble the page, it knows to bring in jQuery before the, the script here that you have that you're registering. Uh, version number, 
is, again, another string. It'll be concatenated as a query string onto the back end of the um, tag. That's good if you want to um, update it to bus caching um, so it looks like a different uh, script um, or keep track. That's optional. And then the last thing is in the footer. Um, which is a value, if you set the, that to be true, then your script will come in at the bottom of the page um, so that the browser doesn't block on loading everything. And it's kind of a nice thing to do. Um, the default is for your scripts to go in the head section, but um, you can override that here with this parameter. So once you have your, your script registered, then you can enqueue it into the list of scripts because WordPress itself is going to go through a whole lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot of plugins on your site. You might have, say, e-commerce. You might have a whole bunch of stuff. So by having the script registered, you can then call it. And there's a couple different rules that WordPress goes to assemble the order of scripts. Um, and um, that's mainly due to the dependencies that we talked about when you register it. And um, it also, you enqueue it with this function here so that it only gets called on the site once. So that um, kind of in the old days before WordPress provided facilities to get the scripts in there, um, you might see someone pull in jQuery four or five times, which causes nothing but headaches and conflicts. So by using these functions and by going through the facilities that WordPress provides, then you can make sure it gets in there once. And then there's other plugins that can do smart things, such as taking all the scripts, compressing them into a single script, and, and fancy stuff that we won't really go into today. Um, and down here, I um, you can't really see it, but um, there are a lot of scripts that come with WordPress by default. So jQuery comes with it by default. Um, a lot of internal stuff. There's even stuff like your tiny much JavaScript. There's a whole list of stuff. So if you go to this page, you'll see um, a growing list of maybe close to 100. It's huge now of different scripts. So that uh, the benefit is you don't have to go out and find all these on your own. You can just reuse what WordPress comes with. Like. And yeah, jQuery UI is in there. Um, prototype was in there. I, I think they're going to deprecate that soon, if not already, um, which is another popular JavaScript library. Um, but this also gives you a common um, set of plugins <clears throat> so that everyone's working with the same code base and kind of bring all the developers on a common ground, too. Um, WordPress itself is really good at keeping the included scripts current, so um, you don't have to worry about um, someone's jQuery from five years ago being in there. Um, if you're using the default uh, WordPress one, then you'll get something relatively current, current to the version of WordPress that you're on. So this is uh, showing how to enqueue the script. There's two ways of doing it. Um, the, the first way assumes that you've registered your script, which was the first function that we talked about. If you've registered your, your script, then WordPress already knows about it. It knows where the URL is, it knows where it's going to go in the site, it knows what it depends on. So all you have to do is call WP and Q script with the uh, handle, which is the string that you gave it um, when you registered it, and then that'll pull it in, and you're done. Um, you'll see sometimes um, people will use the compound in Q script function where it's not necessarily uh, required to register your scripts. If you don't have it registered in advance, you can basically use all the same parameters that you would pass to the register script to the NQ script and, and give it the source, the dependencies, your version, and if it's in the footer or not. Um, the reason most people register, just to um, give you a, a little behind the scenes, is that you might have scripts that would go on um, the front end. You might have some that go on the back end. And in your plugin, if it starts getting big and, and, and um, a lot going on in there, you can register them all at one time and then enqueue them when you need them, which we'll see here. So this is how you call the enqueue functions. Um, when you're writing your plugin, you'll write your own custom-defined plugin function. 
And then inside that function, you can call the WP register script and then and queue script functions. Um, and once you have your function prepared, then there are a couple of different hooks that WordPress has. And, and this is how WordPress um, will incorporate your functions in with the site. So there's um, three different hooks here that um, are actions. The WP and Q scripts will pull your JavaScript into the front end of the website. If you want your script to work on the dashboard or the back end of WordPress, it's a different action here. There's the admin and Q scripts. And then they have a special one for just the login screen as well, which is the login and Q scripts. And, and that's just so that you don't get uh, a lot of bloat going on in the site, slowing it down. You can uh, have a purpose built. Um, so here's a little demo of how it's done. Um, this is uh, assuming that um, your, your plugin basics, you start with your um, go into the plugins folder. Um, you make your own directory to contain your plugins file. You start your PHP file. And inside your PHP file, um, you have your own custom function here. Um, you'll prefix your functions, which is best practices with WordPress. I just use XYZ here. Typically, that would be your vendor string, um, your company name, or something unique so that you don't get a, a, a namespace collision in WordPress. Then you can register your script, um, give it your handle, which is a string. Again, I prefixed it. Um, this here is calling uh, my scripts, which is going to be my JavaScript file. Um, that's going to exist inside of my plugin folder, just at the top level there. Um, and here I'm using plugins URL, which is a, a WordPress function that's built in. The reason I do that is your plugins folder may not always be at the same place based on your installation. Um, since this is depending on a URL, someone might have WordPress deeper. It might WordPress may not be on the root of the site, so it may not be your site slash WP content slash plugins. It might be under a slash blog or a WP um, setup. And if you're especially if you want to ship this code, it's really good to use this built-in because WordPress knows where it is in the file system and anywhere else. So by using this, it um, just eliminates a source of bugs and, and something you'll have to go fix later. Um, this example here, I'm um, saying that this plugin uh, depends on jQuery. Um, it's going to use whatever jQuery is built into to WordPress. And um, I gave it a version number and the last parameter true. We'll set it in the footer. Um, if you don't have any dependencies, then this here could be null. Um, the array uh, parameter here will just be null. Um, and then since I want this on the front of my site, I'll check if I'm on the uh, admin panel. If I'm not, then I'll queue my script. I only have to give it by the handle. This handle here matches this handle here on your registration. And then WordPress has a special action, which we saw on the previous um, slide here. So we get on the front end, your WP and Q scripts is your, um, your hook name. And then this XYZ add scripts is your function name, text string, that goes here. So that's your basic plugin 101 development stuff on uh, adding that in there. So that's the way to get your own custom JavaScript on the front end of the site. Now, the thing with the NQ functions and the registration functions is that they can only really be called once. If you call them a second time with the same handle, um, then WordPress doesn't really do anything. It doesn't change the parameters that you gave it. So if you want to add dependencies or change the path or um, change it from the header to the footer, you can't just recall the register script function and have it work. You first have to deregister the old one and put the new one in. This is kind of a safety mechanism so that you don't have a lot of things fighting over the, the queue and the dependency tree. So um, you'll want to just keep note of that. So, so that it's not the last winner. You have to actually pull it out. And the way that you pull it out is really simple. There is a WP deregister script, and all it takes is the handle, which is your text string, and same with the DQ script. Um, and, and, and that's all, all you need to do. Commonly, 
Um, once you pull something out, you'll just want to turn around and put something back in. Um, because it, um, unless if you're debugging things and have some kind of issue where you think there's a problem being caused, um, then normally you would just pull something out for no reason. Um, so here is a demo to deregister a script. Um, I kind of like this demo for a couple reasons. Um, it's controversial. Um, this is something you wouldn't really want to do. Um, because, mm -hmm. as I was saying in the beginning, WordPress comes with uh, jQuery. This demo will change the jQuery out from the one that comes with WordPress and use a CDN version. Um, if you're working with clients, uh, clients might re request um, that sites load their scripts, especially the common ones, off of CDN, so that's pre-cached. Um, and, and some people will say it loads quicker. Um, sometimes you'll want to benchmark this on your own, on your development site, and just see how it goes. Um, but the reasons against doing this are that, especially with jQuery itself, a lot of things depend on jQuery nowadays. I mean, jQuery is kind of a, a base assumption that you get on websites. So by changing it out, you might cause conflicts where you weren't really expecting it with other plugins that you're working with. So if you do this, make sure that you have a site um, that you're in full control of, that you're testing out what you're doing and not causing issues. And that also means you're going to have to update your version number of changes. Exactly. So there's a couple, another reason that you might want to do this is to lock the version in. Again, if this is a custom site that you're um, really in depth with, say if you're only managing one site and you know what you're doing, you, you, uh, this is an option. Um, but again, um, once you run WordPress updates, then other pieces of code might say, hey, I'm now on WordPress 3.10 or 3.12, and I expect a certain level of jQuery to be there. You yank that out and put this old one in there for your own custom development because you're not a developer who treads lightly. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it, it's, stuff, it's stuff you see out there in the field. Um, you might have collisions when you pull in uh, jQuery off the uh, CDNs. They're in no conflict mode, so it's it's something you'll have to contend with. Um, but what we're doing is we have our own custom function here. Uh, just again prefixed it, checking uh, since this example is a front end example that we're not on the back end here. Um, we're going to pull out the uh, deregister the, the jQuery that comes with WordPress, and then we'll put our own in here. Um, we're going to call it jQuery with the same name. And this is important because this is not prefixed where in my previous example it was because you may have other plugins that in their dependency list depend on jQuery. Uh, this is going to change it out for all of them. So another reason you need to be careful if you do this and um, using the CDN with WordPress is discouraged. Um, here I, I give it the full URL. Um, usually with CDNs, you don't give it a, a protocol name in, in case if you're running on HTTP or HTTPS. Um, so it's a relative URL. Um, here, there's no dependencies to jQuery, so this parameter is false. Um, that, that normally would be your array of dependencies if you had some. Um, and version number. Then once it's registered like normal, then I queue it up. and take my function and hook it into WordPress. Here I'm hooking it onto a knit, so it happens really early on the loading of WordPress um, so that other scripts aren't kind of in motion. Um, this is happening before your EQ scripts would be happening in the hook order. Did These you are... ever find a really good resource that talks about the different um, locations where you can hook to? Because I had a hard time finding that. I did eventually use a knit. But I, I wouldn't think that's not always the right time to do that. No. Um, if you read through functions in the codex, they're getting good at saying um, where the preferred place to hook them into. Is um, that recently? Yeah. Recently? And, and okay. WordPress documentation is a work in progress always. <laughs> so um, it's a little hit and miss. And, and just depending on what you're doing, and it comes with the practice and experience. Okay on the order of things because, um, as you know, you um, you don't see it often, but your um, add actions and hooks can also take another parameter um, that is your priority. So if you're doing things uh, custom and you need things to load ahead or load after, then um, you can also set that priority. 
but that priority only runs um, in relation to what hook you're, you're on. It doesn't run in relation to the full set of actions. So even if you set um, you know, 100 on the init, it's still going to run at init time. It's not going to run at the queue scripts time here. Excuse me. Yeah. Actually, uh, on the uh, the call to WP register script, aren't you missing the uh, array parameter? Um, no, it, it, it's this one here. Isn't that the uh, loaded at the the footer? The footer? No, that would be the last parameter, which is omitted here, just because it's optional. So, oh, okay. So it's, it's going to go in the header here. So, since it's omitted, that's your default value. Um, with the register script, uh, your only two required parameters are your handle name and your uh, URL source. Yeah. You could have omitted false set version number as well. Yeah, because you normally wouldn't be playing with this on jQuery. Um, any other questions? So is the WordPress, like the core functions that are built into WordPress, are they dependent on a certain version of jQuery that never changes currently? Um, this, it, like, I would say never. It changes with versions. So um, 3.7 has an older version, and 3.8 has a newer version. So what I'm wondering is so if, if you're on 3.8, yes, this could. Uh, you wouldn't break it because he's got seen the if not his admin that prevents oh, jQuery from being modified. Admin, yeah. and so it's only going to happen on the so front. Just the end plugins that, right? Um, in in other plugins, right? They could be fighting for the same version. So your other plugins might be develop and test against the stock jQuery that comes with your WordPress core. So this is where things could get a little um, hairy. But if you had control, you could, if you knew one of your plugins needed an older version, you could case switch it and right. do it for a certain thing, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. And. and and instead of just checking here on admin, you can be more specific on certain pages. You can do an is, is page call here or, or, or do things on the slug. You can do other things here to select it because this is a little redundant since, um, well, on, on this one it's not. But um, like I said back here, um, your um, actions, you, you have your different ones for calling the front end, the back end, and the login page. So by just saying that you're not on the admin page and calling on um, the Q scripts, and hooking on that, you're going to get that anyway. So it's kind of built in. But um, so, sometimes it's nice just to have that in there to mentally get your head in the right spot, especially if you are doing more of a feature plugin that might have things that run on the front end, might have things that run in the admin panel so that you have a really fancy back end panel to control your, your plugin. Um, it's sometimes fan better for the programmer eyes so that, especially if there's other people working on it, you kind of get it all in the right spot. Jeremy, did you have a question? I was just going to say, on the example with jQuery there, too, um, I mean, jQuery and WordPress loads in no conflict mode by default. And so you can load two versions of jQuery if you needed a plugin. Like, you could prefix that jQuery with you know some prefix so that only, it doesn't, yeah, only your specific plugin or whatever you're doing, make sure you use that specific one. Yeah. Everything else can use the default one without without clobbering each other. Any other questions or comments? Um, I'll make a quick comment um, about the NQ system for the scripts. There's a similar NQ uh, system for uh, styles as well. So if you go into the uh, codex, the functions are almost identical. So if you want to pull in style sheets as well, then pretty much everything I said here applies there as well. It's also the best way to avoid conflicts, to set dependencies, and whatnot. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you got 10 minutes. Oh, what time is it? 6.57. Oh, awesome. Ahead of schedule, thank you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you made up my seven minute uh, late there. Um, OK, so if you have 10 minutes, it is currently 7 o'clock. So 7.10. So at 7.10, make sure you're back in here. And don't make me yell at you. Be quiet. Um, bathrooms are on the side here if anyone needs yeah, them. Yeah, bathrooms are right behind this wall. Um, if you need water or anything, there's a fridge over here. Is it possible to pause the um, broadcast? It's going to cut it and start a new one. Yeah, don't yeah pause it. we don't want to stop it. We just, just, just um, push the elevator yeah, music. Yeah, it.
Set. Unmuted. Unmuted. Sweet. All right. Did you guys not like my picture? Nobody said anything. The doctor. <laughs> yeah, that's my toolkit. <clears throat> Go for wire. All right. Um, uh, where to start? So this presentation is about a plugin for WordPress that helps you develop other plugins for WordPress. Okay. Uh, this plugin is called GitHub Updater. Uh, what is it? It is a plugin. So you will install it. You'll see it in your plugins with all of your other plugins. Um, you can put it in the MU plugins folder if you don't want it to be able to be de deactivated uh, on your client site. So if you don't want them to accidentally click the deactivate button and you always want it to run, there's a folder um, in your WP content folder. So the typical trio of folders in your WordPress install is admin, includes, and contents. All of your themes and plugins go in the WP content folder. Um, and then if you have a folder called mu-plugins, there are plugins that you can't deactivate without FTP access. So you can put it in there, too. Um, what's it do? It allows the standard one-click WordPress update process for plugins that are not in the WordPress.org repository. So if you're used to looking for plugins by going to the plugins page, searching for a plugin, WordPress SEO, and then there's a plugin there for you. Fantastic. You click the install button, and then every two weeks when you log back into your website, it says you have eight updates, right? And you just click the update all button and pray that your website doesn't break. Um, hopefully it backed up first. So if you want that process uh, to exist for a plugin or theme that you've created, but you don't want to develop the plugin or theme for everyone in the WordPress.org repository, you would use this plugin. Uh, why? Well, I think I just kind of answered that for you. But it allows you to create custom GitHub. GitHub is a um, software as a service. Themes and plugins to use within the WordPress update system. Any questions on that? Awesome. Uh, so, step one. So I'm going to walk you through how you would do this. So if you are going to create your own plugin and use the GitHub Updater system, this is what you'd do. Uh, install GitHub Updater plugin. Uh, again, the slides are available publicly, and that is a link to the plugin that you download and install. Um, so you'd go to the GitHub Updater uh, for GitHub plugin. You'd visit your website. So sethkarstens.com, you'd go to slash admin. I don't know if all of you knew this or not, but in the recent update, you don't have to type wp-admin anymore. You can just go to slash admin. It takes you right into the admin. Uh -huh. No more WP. Um, you'd go to your plugins. You'd click add new. Hopefully this is a review for all of you. I expect most of the people in this room would have added a new plugin to their uh, website before. You would upload the zip file that you got from this link over here, and you'd activate the plugin. Pretty simple, I hope. And if I have time, I will demo this for you uh, here. But again, I'm bad with time, so you know. Step two. Uh, you would create a free github.com repository for your plugin to live. So all of your code would be there. Um, you would be using a versioning system, which is a fantastic way to develop a plugin or theme, especially if you will have more than one person uh, developing the code. How many of you have heard of GitHub? Most of you? OK, let's ask, who hasn't heard of GitHub? Three, four, OK. Uh, let me give you a little brief, like, what this is. GitHub uh, is, it uses something called Git, hence the name of the website. And Git is a place for your code to live 
so that you have version control. And version control is kind of like the magic undo button in Control Z, but um, infinitely historic. So if you go in and you update your plugin and it completely breaks all the websites, and you're like, I really wish I had what I had. I really wish I knew what my plugin was like a week ago so that I could just go back to that and start again. You can with GitHub and Git. Um, you can go back a week to whenever your code was OK. Uh, you can pull that all back into your system, and then you can upload it to your websites, and all of your websites will work again. Um, some people call that backup. Uh, I don't call that backup. I use a system like Backup Buddy or um, R3Soft's backup on the server to provide full backups of the entire WordPress installation. But it does allow you, as a developer, to kind of go back in time and retrace your steps. Uh, GitHub updater step three. Uh, install Git or a user interface that will allow you to um, put your files up on GitHub. So Git is not FTP. You can't just click and drag your files and they arrive on GitHub. Uh, there is a system for moving your files into and out of uh, your Git repository. Um, I'm going to suggest a few to you here. These are not the only ones out there, but uh, they're probably the most commonly used. Uh, user interfaces. If you are more comfortable with command line tools, um, you can go to the first link here. Download it, install it on your computer, open up the bash, and command line go to town. Uh, you're going to need that anyway, so go ahead and download and install that. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to pick a user interface. If you want something where you can just click and drag on the screen and see your files, not unlike FileZilla, um, then these are your user interface recommendations. Uh, Smart Git, I've been using for the longest. Uh, they also make Smart SVN and Smart uh, mercurial. Um, so the other uh, version control systems, you can get the so same software. It works on Windows and it works on Mac. Uh, and I think they even have a Linux. I want to say that they have a Linux installation as well. Um, this is premium. We'll pay for this if you want this one. PHP Storm has its own built-in uh, Git management system. I find it to be fantastic. And since then, almost never use SmartKit. Uh, PHP Storm also costs money, uh, but PHP Storm isn't just a Git management tool. You can also code in here. It is your IDE. Um, and it's fantastic. I know Mara uses it. Anyone else use PHP Storm? Yeah, I can. She uses it. Wow, that's it. How about Sublime Text? How many use Sublime Text? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. No, Coda. 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 Oh, Coda, yeah. Our Mac users. Vim. What is it? Vim. <laughs> you use Vim? OK, so Notepad. <laughs> it's, it's, it's better than Notepad. It's not uh, And this is Source Tree. Uh, you may have heard of Source Tree simply because Bitbucket offers free Git repositories that are private. And that's what they market to you to use. Uh, that's actually what I use, and I really like it. Do you? Mm -hmm. And it's free, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So this is probably your user most graphic user interface just for Git, and it doesn't cost you any money. This is one built into the IDE for you, and this one is paid but amazing. What about GitHub's client? Yeah, they're yeah. official. Yeah, the best. That's what I the use. Best. That's awesome. They have a UI as well now, too. And I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, their GitHub client's awesome. That's what I use. And it works with Bitbucket. It works with local repositories, too. It works with, it's awesome. So cool. GitHub apparently has their own that you can try. And that's free. I like that one the best. It's simpler than Source Tree. Really? So, Source Tree is a little bit convoluted. Huh. It has less features, though. Can you do, yeah, like, yeah. branching or cherry picking or all that stuff? Yeah, there? cherry picking and do branching. One thing you can't do with it is tagging. Oh. Which is weird. So I just do that from the command line. because it takes. Uh, you don't. Time. So on that note, you actually don't need to be able to tag from your, your user interface. From the github.com web interface, you can actually tag out right on the website. So you don't need any tools. You can just go to github.com, uh, go to your plugin, and then whatever code that you have in there at the time, you can just click the tag button, and it will do all the work for you. So you can continue to use the GitHub UI 
which doesn't do tagging because they made their web interface do the tag. So that actually makes that sense. Nice. Mm -hmm. I do all my tagging from the website. That's just way easier. I don't have to think about it. It does all the hard work for me. OK, so step four is to create the first version of your plugin or theme. Uh, I am going to say from now on just plugin so that I don't have to say plugin or theme like 100 times. Um, but this GitHub updater does work for themes or plugins. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do if you're not familiar with Git is you're going to clone your repository. And what that means is you're going to bring the like one file that comes with your uh, repository down into your local development setup. Um, then what you're going to do is create your plugin or theme files. Maybe you already have them, so you've already been working on it, but you're going to now need to move them into your project. Um, and then you will add them to Git. Uh, any of the user interface clients will help you adding the files and um, committing them, which is the next step. So you set your version and your code in, in plugins. It'll be in your plugins PHP file, the primary file that you create when you start the plugin. If you want to know more about plugin development, it is available on the codex. It's a very good and lengthy um, instructional tutorial on how to create plugins for WordPress. Um, in themes, you would set your version in your style.css. Uh, because that is where all the metadata comes from for your theme. So you'll name your theme and the description and the author, and then one of those <coughs> meta tags will give you your version. So you'll set that to 1.0.0, just as an example. And then you will commit and push. Commit and push means upload in FTP language, right? Um, so that will move the code from your computer up onto GitHub. Uh, you will create. So the last part is what Jeremy was talking about that the UI won't do for you in, on GitHub's UI is that you need to create a tag for this version of your plugin in Git or on GitHub. Does, that brings up a good point. So if you don't tag it on GitHub, because in typical WordPress repo, um, you just update the version number and you plug in the PHP file, and then you commit it, and then that updates. That, that's what triggers the update for everything else, is just updating that version number line. Right. So with this plugin, you're saying you have to tag it. And correct. Is that what triggers? That is correct. Okay. So what the plugin is going to do after you tag is it's going to go out to GitHub every time that WordPress checks for updates, and it's going to say, what are all of the tags for this plugin? Well, in this case, there's only going to be one at this point in time. But in the future, there could be 100 tags. Um, you might be on version 4.0, right? And so it's going to go get a list of all of your tags, and then it's going to compare the most recent tag to the current version you have. So if you have version 3.9 and it finds version 4.0, it's going to tell you you have an update. But it won't do that unless you tag it. Uh, step five. So now, so we have version one in the repository. Now we're going to talk about creating your first update. <clears throat> um, you're going to add an extra. Uh, so this is metadata, and it gives you both examples of a, uh, a theme and a plugin. And this is just a screenshot from uh, the GitHub README file of GitHub Updater plugin. So you can go read all the documentation on how to use this. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to add the snippet of code here or this snippet of code here to your theme or plugin. Uh, <clears throat> he's just giving you an example, but if your plugin resides at github.com slash afragan slash test-child, then that is what you put there. And this is what tells GitHub Updater plugin where to go look for tags. So you're going to add this snippet of code to the bottom of your metadata in your plugin or theme. And that's what tells GitHub Updater plugin where to go check for updates. Questions about that? Yes? Uh, are you going to go over private repository? I will briefly 
um, explain that it is enabled. Okay. <laughs> but yes, it is in it's in the deck. Uh, so then, like Michael Jackson, let's make a change. Um, after you make your change, so let's say you updated the version of jQuery uh, to load from the Google CDN using the Q script. Uh, then you're going to commit that code and push, just like we previously did, to get version 1 in. Um, we're going to change the version number of our plugin or theme, maybe to 1.0.1. And then we are going to tag, just like we did before. But now, GitHub will see version 1.0 tag, and it'll see version 1.0.1 tag. Um, when you're done, uh, WordPress will show you the nice little uh, sync icon with a 1 in it that says that your plugin needs to be updated on your WordPress site. Uh, the update link will be there. You will click the update link, and it will pull the newest version down from GitHub for you. Insert to DOS out here for those Windows 98 users. Um, extras extended. Okay, so this is a little additional information for stuff that I didn't cover in the very basic creating your plugin with GitHub Updater. There are rollback options. This is not available from the WP8.org system. So this is something that we built extra. Oh, I'm the co-author of this plugin, by the way. Is this uh, the, Tenet, the Tenet version, or no. the different one? Yes. Okay. I didn't know they had one. Okay. There wasn't one in the repository when we were making it. The only one that was in there was by the University of Florida, and it failed miserably, so we built our own. And I mean, are you working with like P.D. Clark and stuff? Paul Clark is on the, was on the project, but he's not really doing any work. Okay. Um, so, rollback options. So the additional thing that this gives you is if you update uh, your plugin to version 1.0.1 and it breaks your website, what you would normally have to do is either have a backup or you'd have to go to the WordPress.org website, know how to get to an older version of your plugin, download it, upload it back to your website, uh, and then you would be set because you'd move back from 1.0.1 to version 1.0. Uh, WordPress doesn't really give you a good way to do that from the user interface. What GitHub Updater allows you to do is after you've updated to the most recent version, it gives you an option to roll back. So you update to 1.0.1, your website gets the white screen of death, you go back into the admin options, you say roll back to version 1.0.0, you click OK, it goes out and pulls that old version for you back into your website, activates it, and then you're back and rolling, just like you were before. Uh, the other thing that it gives you is we went the other direction. If you want to pull into your development site, the most recent uh, in, in Git, it's called the master. Um, so that's the code that you have that hasn't been tagged uh, yet to a new version. So if you want that beta code to be on your website, there's a link that says um, update to beta. So you can pull, you can update uh, your website's code to the beta version simply by selecting the beta link at the top. Um, I gave you all these examples because uh, we had a very long and heated discussion about exactly how this feature was going to work um, from developers that did things a certain way. Some developers use the dev branch for their development. Some people develop right in the master branch. Um, some people develop in a trunk in SVN. So if you're SVN doing an SVN mirror, then you'll have a trunk area. And so we kind of had to account for all of these things. Uh, so if you read the documentation, you could learn how to switch between these. But if you don't do anything at all, it'll at least pull from your master branch, which is the default of where all your code goes if you followed the steps that I showed you today. Uh, the last extra option that you have with GitHub Updater is the ability to update from private mm -hmm. repositories. So if you do not intend for your code to be used by anyone but yourself, um, you would use this. So selfish. What's that? <laughs> That's so selfish. <laughs> <laughs> um, an example, you created a custom plugin for a client, and it really only pertains to their website because you custom built their theme, and the plugin and the theme go along together, and they really should only be activated together on that one site. So it's not useful to anyone else. Uh, so proprietary stuff or just stuff that you don't want out there, 
you can do that. You can use private repositories um, with uh, API keys. Uh, so it will go out and make sure if the API key is um, in your plugin, then it will know to go get updates from a private repository. If the API key is not in your plugin, then it does not. And the reason why they use keys is because you can create and deactivate these keys. So if you create a key and then you think it was stolen, you can deactivate it, create a new key, put those in your files, and then anyone that might have stolen your key no longer has access to your repository. Uh, kind of like changing your password, right? Um, so it does work with private repositories. There is uh, documentation on how to set that up exactly on the GitHub. Um, when you visit the plugin on GitHub, there's documentation at the bottom of every single plugin or code that's out there, and it tells you right how to do it, you know, step by step in your plugin files. Um, I think that's actually the end of my slides. Hopefully, I blew through that so that I have some time to show you all of this. 7.32. Yeah, I got like 50 minutes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Any questions about, I mean, I, I did go through that really fast. Is there like uh, something you didn't understand? Does require um, that the Git binaries to be installed, um, or does it just grab like a zip file? It does not require Git to be installed on the server where the website is located. This process will push your uh, files up to GitHub. But besides that, no, the server does not have to have Git for this process to work. Good question. Any other questions? Or do you want to see it? Did you just say no? I said yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> oh, my screens. OK. Um, so my job was to get here an hour early today to set up a demo for you, and I failed to do said tasks. So, so we're I'm going to wing it. it. And we have a little bit of time. So I also hope that we'll have plenty of time for other questions or open forums so we don't just have to talk about GitHub update or plugin today. Um, Win. So this is my ideas portal. So every time I come up with a new idea and I have to do something about it, I create a new website here. Um, before I show you this, let's actually check out GitHub. And I'll show you how to uh, find this plugin if you were to not use a link from my slide. So up here in GitHub, there's a search. And I'm going to type GitHub updater. Plug, plug in WordPress. There's the U UCF, University of Central Florida, I think. The one that we're looking mm -hmm. for is by A. Fragan. That is the author. There's the 10 up one. Mm, yes. That's the one I've been using, but I'm trying to find one that's updated more often. Andy and I update with every WordPress release. Any second dot release. <clears throat> um, wow. There's a lot of them now. I, <laughs> I wish these would have all been here before, because I didn't mm -hmm. really want to waste that much of my time redeveloping somebody else. There it is. So apparently, plugin is not anywhere in our description. <laughs> I will mention that to Andy. Not so, SEO experts, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Andy is a surgeon. And so every Wednesday, Andy and I have a little Google Hangout. And well, not every Wednesday, but every Wednesday that we need to talk about something, we have a Google Hangout. And so he's the first person that I have not met in person, but I've developed with, which is really awesome. I thought it was cool. Where do you live? <clears throat> Michigan. So Wednesdays he works from home, and Wednesdays I work from home, and it just works out. Yeah, this is the non-active one. Yeah, it should just be GitHub. Yeah, GitHub updater. Mm, yeah. 
You are yeah, absolutely I think it was... correct. I don't know why it's not showing up. I don't know. Yeah, when I searched it, I just searched GitHub Updater, actually, yeah. I guess. Okay, so if you just search for GitHub Updater, it's apparently the first thing. Here it is. Okay, so at the bottom of the screen, you get the README, which should tell you most of what you need to know about the plugin. Um, you can see here all of the contributors, main contributors. It's GPL license, so you're welcome to take it, fork it, do whatever you want with it, uh, make it your own. Um, here's the snippet that I had in my slide that shows you what you need to do inside of your theme or plugin. Um, an installation process. I actually didn't copy any of this from his site, but it does tell you pretty much everything that I just told you today. Um, shows you what command line to use to download using Git. That's the cloning part of the. Okay, so here's the uh, some examples of the snippet. So that I scrolled past it, but that's a theme. So if, so if you're creating a theme, this is what you, the top of your style.css is going to look like, and here is the GitHub theme URI. And he even shows you how to um, select a branch if you're going to use the development platform of a branch besides master. You change this to dev or whatever branch that you're using. Oh, optional headers. So he, these are called headers, these meta values that you saw. Sorry. So these are all headers. And so the optional headers are GitHub Access Token, GitHub Branch, which you do see here. Um, Bitbucket Branch, we are um, extending this plugin to work with Bitbucket. And uh, so you use the GitHub Access Token and then a colon, just like this. And then you put your token in there, and that would allow you to pull in from a private repository. That's only on GitHub, though. But only, yeah. On Bitbucket, it puts the username and the password in the URL in order to pull from it, like you oh, did yeah. old FTP style. Remember that FTP yeah. links to the username and password? That's how you do it with Bitbucket. Um, so, yeah, the Bitbucket portion of this is not, it's called GitHub Updater Plugin. So, obviously, we didn't originally intend for it to be a part of Bitbucket, <laughs> but Jeez, uh, the Bitbucket becomes more popular. It's just not it. it. Um, this tells you about tagging and how the updates work, Bitbucket support. Uh, there's now a Bitbucket branch header, so you can at least pull different branches from Bitbucket. Uh, let's see if it has... Yep, it looks like you updated it. So this is how you pull a private repository from Bitbucket. Um, is in the Bitbucket plugin URI, which is right here. So this would be your header. And then you change it so that you have a password here slash owner slash repo. So, so there's an error, though. So if you want to help him figure this out, there is uh, an issue. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought there was something that we hadn't finished yet. WordPress gives, like, a bad zip file error. Oh, really? I was going to say, I thought I had tried that months ago, and no success. Right. That, that would explain that. Um, so the other thing that uh, Andy wanted me to tell you about, because uh, I tweeted out about this presentation and he caught on and responded back, is that um, if you want to host a plugin on the wp.org repository and in GitHub, we are enabling that um, so that they don't conflict with each other. Uh, so if you wanted to update from one or the other, you can now control that. So you can have your plugin in the repository or not, or in both places. Um, and he We'll walk you through a little bit about that here. And of course, we have the GitHub Updater Issues page. So any GitHub um, project will have uh, basically a ticketing system where you can come in and if you have a problem with this plugin, you can create your own issue here, and then we will take a look at it and respond to you and let you know in what version uh, that comes out that we will fix your, your particular issue. And look, that looks like a Familiar question. Does Git need to be installed on the server for the plugin work? <laughs> no. Yeah, we've had some issues because uh, there are actually a few other features that I didn't cover. Um, one of them is that it goes to GitHub to get your um, 
I don't know if you've ever installed a theme and looked at any of the options, but one of the options is view details, and it like pops up a window and gives you information from wp.org. Uh, well, that's really hard to do <laughs> for GitHub, especially. Um, so we designed a system to do that, and then in three, the transition from WordPress 3.8 to WordPress 3.9, they completely like redid the way the themes work in WordPress, and it uh, really broke everything that we had built for it. So we're in the process of rebuilding that now. Um, we fixed most of the problems, but don't be surprised if you go to see theme details and it doesn't show you exactly what you were thinking was going to show up. Um, so that is the GitHub Updater plugin on GitHub. Can I ask you a question that's yeah. around that idea? Um, do you put your custom plugins, like you're saying, that don't really apply to any other project on the planet, do you put those on GitHub? I have a private GitHub account. OK, so you do, do keep them private. I do. There are not very many, but yeah, most of my stuff is public. In fact, I have a WordPress Phoenix group on GitHub for local development and Phoenix projects. Do you have any thoughts about being private or public for those um, one-off type plugins? Or I mean, that's why I use Bitbucket, because they're pretty right, cheap to yes. pay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's not cheap, either. You're, you're talking like 15 to $25 a month, depending on exactly how many repositories you have. So. Yeah, so that's why I use Bitbucket, because almost all my plugins. I do have some on GitHub, my ones that are in the WordPress repo. I just put those yeah, on uh, GitHub, but then on Bitbucket. All my custom stuff is on Bitbucket. It's free, so. I'd probably keep it that way. Yeah, it's the same with us. It's free on Bitbucket. Yeah, yeah that's why I use Bitbucket. Yeah, you yeah, Bitbucket for private, GitHub for public. So the difference is the free. pricing layout. In Bitbucket, they charge you depending on how many users need access to the repository. So if it's just you or just you and one other person, I think there's it's up to five users for free. Oh, it's up to five. Okay. So you can have up to five people contributing to the same code at the same time. On GitHub, you can have a hundred people contributing to the code, but it depends on how many repositories you want. So you only get like ten repositories for like. 25 or 50 bucks a month. I mean, it is pretty expensive. Uh, but, well, Bitbucket, if you want, you can have unlimited private on Bitbucket. On GitHub, you can have unlimited public, right? Yes, you have an unlimited public. So that's just how I've been working it. Public goes to GitHub, private goes to Bitbucket. Yep. <clears throat> um, a little side note how many of you have heard of GIST? G I S T. Oh, good, most of you. Um, have you heard of GIST box? Yeah, I can show you something yeah. here. OK, so GISTs are really awesome. They're like snippets of code that you want to save. You probably save them in like a notepad somewhere, or maybe if you're using Dreamweaver, you use snippets, or Sublime Text, I think, has snippets too. Um, anyways, so what if you wanted to like keep track of like how the code changed in that snippet of code, because you liked it better how it was last year before you messed with it? So GIST is a way of sharing code as well. And just box is a web service that connects. Uh, let me do it on my. Uh, just box app um, caches all of your gists locally and uh, provides you a search engine of just your own gists. So, just as an example. I have an auto login. So when I get, sometimes I get client information, and all they have is FTP information. And I'm like, where's my WordPress login? And they're like, oh, I don't know how to get in there. Um, so I built a function that lets me log in as, um, to a user uh, without user credentials. I know it sounds really safe, doesn't it? Hmm. It's just temporary. Um, so let's search for login. So here's my require login script. It, uh, I copied this into the functions file. I visit a URL, which you would be able to figure out if you read through the entire script here. Uh, it logs me in as an admin user. I then go into the site. I create myself my own admin user. And then I turn this back off. And the site is secure again. Um, but I use just for things like this. Like That is code that's never permanently going to stay on any website. Um, but I use it all the time. You can only do that with FTP, though, right? 
Correct. You would need FTP access to use PHP code or update the theme or plugin. You'd have to stick it somewhere that it's loading. What do you could do some kind of injection? Uh, it's not to say that they couldn't do the injection. It depends on what plugin you have loaded. If you have a plugin loaded that is allowing a form to submit into the database and that plugin did not escape the value before it comes in, they can inject whatever the code they want, uh, which is the danger of WordPress and open source. Um, but if the plugin is created properly and has escaped that information, no, there's no. So how do you figure that out? Uh, is there a plugin for that? Is there a plugin to figure out if your website's safe? If your, if your plugin it's called been. WP Engine, oh, because okay. they block stuff that is oh, not is that safe. Right? And they review code uh, because they want their servers to be safe. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, pay twenty-five dollars per domain for your websites, uh, host with WP Engine, and your problem would be solved. Was the question if it's looking at somebody else's plugin or your own? Somebody else's. Oh, yeah. Okay. Looking at your own plugin, it's semi-easy. Um, anywhere that the user could. Yeah, so um, add or modify anything in the database, you would check those lines of code and make sure that they do or don't need to be escaped. That's what WordPress calls it. And they have several escaping functions that are all available on the codex. If you Google escaping WordPress, um, you will get everything that you need to know about properly coding for secure plugins and themes. Themes are far more dangerous. I've seen lots of themes that do insecure things. Plugins like just the init ability of an, a developer to create a plugin versus a theme, um, they tend to be a lot safer with their code. That personality type is just different than the, I'm going to develop a theme and pray that I sell a billion copies for $1. Um, that's just a different mentality than the plugin mentality. So most of the issues I find. But if you want, for example, if you go to WP Engine um, blacklisted plugins, you can find a group of plugins you should not be using on your website. So this is the disallowed plugins page. Um, well, except for first. Right. first. They, they tell you why, but they tell you why some of them because they're insecure or they're not allowed. Or, but or they, uh, they duplicate functionality provided by WP. Because those caching plugins are fine. It's just that Server and MySQL thrashing plugins. Don't install any of these unless you don't care about performance on your website. I actually used Tweet Blender for years, but apparently I was killing. Um, oh, no. It doesn't say anything bad about Tweet Blender, aside from it doesn't play nicely with their caching layer. Oh. Oh, well, and, and can cause load. increased server load, but yeah. That's because they didn't use tweets. So every time you loaded the page, it would call an API, Twitter API. Right. Um, broken link checker. Anyway, so I would read through this page if you want to know like some do's and don'ts about plugins or why they use them or why they don't. I just I found it to be very informational about plugins that I was already using. <clears throat> it's, it have, they have suggestions and stuff too for replacements, which is nice. Yes. Like do. there's Google Sitemaps plugins that are on the disallowed list and a lot of people want those and so they have good suggestions. I would think you could also just do a Google search and look up security for some of those too. Yeah. OK, so that was WP Engine's blog article. Talked a little bit about JustBox. I think it's fantastic. Again, great way to share code. I can then tweet this out from here if I want to share it on Twitter or copy it and email it to somebody or whatever I want to do. Um, and then they can actually go and make comments on my code, and I can see their comments, or they can recommend a, an update, like if I mistyped something, or there's misspelling, or it crashed their server, or whatever. Um, just box, really awesome. OK, back to uh, the alien down here. OK, so this is a standard WordPress site. It does have a custom theme on it. Go to slash admin. Of course, this is not my last pass. or would have logged me in already. Of course, that's not the password. Well, it's because you're trying to do a live demo. I know. <laughs>
When? I remember it. No, I don't want you to remember. Oh, never click save password here. It will save your password in plain text for any plugin in uh, Google Chrome. In fact, there is an option I'm going to go turn on right now that will stop that from ever even prompting me. Let's do that again. Not to ever click yes. Why do you say not to click yes? It saves it in plain text for any Google Chrome plugins. So not just anything. Like a JavaScript isn't going to get in and get it. But if you install a Google Chrome plugin that is just there to look really cool, like it's going to do something awesome for you and realize it's going to steal all your username and passwords. Okay. Um, when you install LastPass, it proves that to you because it shows you all your passwords in plain text. Oh. Awesome, huh? huh? So passwords and forms, uncheck the enable autofill, uncheck the offer to save your passwords. And please. OK, so when I go to updates, you will notice that there is an update to my theme. So this is my custom theme. It's called White Label Framework. Um, the version that's on this site is version 2.0.3. Can you all see this? Not too big. So you have version 2.0.3 installed. It found that I've tagged version 2.0.6, which is obviously newer, and it gives me the ability to update here. Uh, let's go check it out on GitHub. Um, white label framework is. Um, so we have 29 releases. Codename Catfish, recently released. So you can see this is the version I had before. The newest version that I recently tagged out on March 14th. Why don't you skip digits so you can have odd numbers all the time? <laughs> no, I had multiple local revisions. Oh. Um, so that's why there are different numbers there. Um, so here you can clearly see I have two different, I've tagged twice, right? I tagged for 2.0.3, which is what's on there right now. It found 2.0.6. We can go back and view the code here. Um, this is all open source, by the way, so any, any of you can go and view this particular theme to see how it works with GitHub Updater plugin. So there's the style.css file. You can see I didn't put it at the bottom, but I did put it in here. It's going to load this as the GitHub updater theme URI. So that's where it's going to get the tags. It's pulling from the master branch, which is the default. Um, I'm actually going to go now into appearance to show you another way that you can update your That's the, if you want to update um, all of your themes at the same time screen. This is the actual theme screen. You can see the update available, just like you would expect to see here. I click the details. An update is available. A new version of Mole framework is available now. I added this little last part just so that you knew it was coming from the GitHub Updater plugin. Um, you can not click View 2.0.6 Details because I just told you that it broke when they updated to 3.9, so don't bother. Um, but if you click Update Now, it's thinking. You will see right here that it's actually pulling your update from api.github.com slash repos slash WordPress Phoenix slash white label framework, and then the version is 2.0.6. It unpacks it, installs it. Um, so this is extra. You won't see this on WordPress updates. But when you pull something from GitHub, you actually have to rename the folder name because the branch is appended at the end of the folder name, or you end up with a theme dash branch folder in your themes folder. Um, theme folder name corrected, removing old version of the theme. And theme updated successfully. So now when I go back to 
the update screen, there should be nothing here because we're now all up to date. Oh, I'm also running version uh, 4 of WordPress here. So nothing to update anymore. We come back into appearance and you can see that our white label framework plugin is now completely up to date, version 2.0.6. Can we clap? Yay, get a white label. <laughs> Any more questions about GitHub Updater? Cool. So what else do you guys want to talk about? Any questions, burning questions, projects you're working on, can't find an answer? Crickets? I'll ask the questions. Is there a simple utility you can run just to check all your plugins against a new WordPress rep and see if it's OK? Is there something like that? Is there something that you can a utility? Verify if your plugins won't break on the new rep. No, you would need a staging site where you would clone whatever website you have, and then you would update, and then you'd make sure that it works. No, there's yeah. no utility that's going to be able to check them for you. But, yeah, so I was thinking more like the community keeps on <coughs> checking and then they hey, this plug-in roll with the Yes, so uh, is there, a there is. So if you go to WordPress.org, yeah. and you were using WordPress.org plugins, yeah. We go to plugins. We'll do WordPress SEO. Scroll down. You look on the right side over here, and you yep. see that 10 people say that this plugin works with the most recent version. Yes. Yeah. There's no utility that just takes that for every one of your plugins and gives you that. No, but that's a really good idea. Yeah. Part of the challenge is that there are so many explicit use cases. So many people have so many different combinations of plugins oh, yeah. um, that, like, I've had plugins that just broke the style specifically, and it it's broken in my mind, and I need to go and fix it and you know figure out time to do that. But that doesn't mean the plugin itself is broken. But he's saying, broken. like, if I went to my WordPress plugin update screen and there are ten, what if it pulled in the metadata from WordPress.com yeah, exactly. oh. It says it works or it doesn't work. And ten people said it's okay. Right? Just give you that info. Yeah. That would be really yeah. useful. That would be so nice. if you go yeah. down and there's like a doesn't work, like don't update that one. Right? That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Or disable completely. Build it. Um, yeah, I, I would really love to see uh, info on that on that same screen that had when the plugin was last updated. Mm -hmm. Just a quick reference rather than having to go check. I think there's pretty active discussion right now about redoing the whole plugins page screens anyways. Oh. So I'll have to check that out on that, I think that page has been pretty stagnant for quite a while. Yeah. So that's the issue is they're thinking about how to redo they, it. In the three point eight they added the stars, so obviously they've been working on the page. Um, yeah. It's so, been the really minor things, but they're talking about redoing I mean they recently redid all the themes pages and now they're kind of thinking the same thing with plugins. So yep. Hopefully it'll be a lot more useful soon. I'm sure that will make my GitHub update or update hell. But. And that's something <laughs> um, that Jeremy brings up that I don't check often enough. And Seth's saying you're on 4.0. Like they're making progress in developing 4.0. And that means you've probably been reading it make.wordpress.org. I do sometimes, but. But I, I feel like I should check that more often. Just, you know, if you're managing sometimes a site and it's good to know what's coming. Um, you can get a lot of detailed information on planned feature changes and updates and uh, like cool I can tell you like that, that they've been working really hard on documentation because they just created a documentation um, task force. So it, uh, basically, they're people that already work for the WordPress.org core team, but they have now a secondary job, like six or seven people, and documenting WordPress.com and its updates, and the core functions, um, and hooks and filters, and all that stuff. So they're completely revamping the developer's handbook, which most people don't even know exists. Uh, they're making it searchable. They're adding uh, new style and design, um, of course, because of, maybe what's her last name now? Mary, no, Mary, it was Mary Jane Wells, right? Now, who is she? Jane, uh, Jen Milo. Jen Milo. Yeah, OK. Yeah, she changed her name. 
Yeah. Um, anyway, so she's a UI person, and so they're redeveloping the UI on the developer's handbook as well. So that's coming in the next 12 months. I would expect to see some publicity on it. So they're trying to make education better and documentation better because they know that right now it's basically a wiki. Like, if the community doesn't update it, it doesn't get updated. Uh, so they have a task force um, that's on that, and you'd only know that, right, if you were, like Mara was saying, if you were involved in the community and going to these sites and subscribing to the news. And, um, so if you are into a developing just WordPress, then that might be a really great place for you to start um, subscribing to. No other burning questions? This is your only chance. Can I ask a CSS Sure. Absolutely. Okay, I'm using the CSS Animate to take um, over control of the scroll bar and do some fancy um, fancy animation on scrolling. And I have the, the plugin is working um, except for Safari browsers. And it's when I'm on a page and I'm trying to go to a hashtag so that I can go down into the pages. It's, it's a spa. Right. And um, it works on it works on Chrome, but it's breaking for Safari. Safari is just going to the top of the page and not to the hash. Does anyone know? So you're talking about CSS3? Are you sure it's only using it's CSS? It's not CSS3. It's not a CSS3 transition. It's using CSS Animate, which is an animation. jQuery plugin? It's a jQuery. It's a jQuery. I haven't actually run this. Um, yeah. Yeah, because most or, of the I haven't Googled that. CSS3. That's CSS3 anim animations, <clears throat> but there's a, a thing called CSS Animate that um, allows you to do some nice CSS animations. Hmm. I don't know. I have not played with CSS Animate. Anyone else? Oh, Heard of? Right? No? Yes. Sorry, are we got another Okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was asking, so I just. No? Yeah. <clears throat> so. I have a Git-related kind of question, and, and that is more kind of, uh, I'm looking for a discussion on how everybody uses GitHub. I know we use it for theme and plugin development, but um, do, do you, does anyone here use it for site management, for, um, you know, backups of just the site to make it easy to roll back? Um, do you have a Git repo, basically, at the core? Um, and how common is that? Like, is that something that... Nick, I should it? be doing, looking into. I mean, it, I it. it seems like so a the, huge uh, repo. From so, the very of WordPress. Yeah, I host on hosting. Yeah. And I don't have control over what the heck's going on sometimes. Yeah. So I'm just going in and saying, any update that I make, I'm going to take a snapshot update. It, so That's smart. Yeah. How about the media folder? Do you exclude it? No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> media folder being where you're. Where you're pictures go and you upload them through the WordPress interface, it could be 2 gig, and you don't want that in your Git repository. So um, Git allows you to ignore certain folders within the, uh, in fact, ignoring all images folders might not be a horrible idea, mm -hmm. but yeah, I do not. Um, I only host the WP content folder in my Git repositories. I do create projects per domain name, so like SethCarsons.com might have its own, and then all you see in the repository is WP content folder because it's all I care to track. Um, if you wanted to go crazy with it, you could probably use put WordPress in because WordPress is in Git. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use it as submodule, so you could stick WordPress in as a submodule as to not have to like actually keep all those files in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was just debating on that, um, especially with already being on WP Engine with a lot of sites, they're taking backups regularly. We're taking as well. So where does Git fall into that? Because it's offered. You know, I have it available to me as a tool, but at the same time, where would that fall into the workflow? So the GitHub right. is not a backup for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't, yeah, and I, that's where I'm like, I wouldn't, I'm not, I already have backups in place. If you put core under uh, version control, it'll stop the auto update. Oh, that's good to know. I hadn't really thought of that. <laughs> it seems like it'll take care of the development. Yeah. 
What's that? I was saying, just just use Git for development. I don't really see it as a backup in any way. I mean, uh, so another developer that frequents our group, um, Nick, he uses it as a backup. <laughs> so if something happens or a plugin gets updated that shouldn't have been, he has the previous version or a working version that he had. Um, so he does use it that way. I do not, but he definitely... The other reason he uses it that way is he does local development a lot, like everything that he does, he develops locally. And if in your Git repo that you're cloning, you're not getting the entire WordPress install, then you don't have everything you need to develop locally. So he puts everything in his repository so that when he develops locally and saves stuff before he commits it to the Git repo, it's all there. WordPress, all the plugins, um, everything. That's how I did it. And that's how you yeah, do it. I can see a case for that. Yeah, I can totally for see that. WP Engine people like us, then I don't see the point. We yeah. already got all the backup and rollback. And look at that. Well, yeah, that's why I'm and like, how would I and, fit that into yeah. my workflow? Could I add something more that I'm really missing out on? Local yeah. development. Well, yeah, but even then, you know, if you're using the other tools and, you know, using Git already for the themes. Mm -hmm. You just wouldn't be able to track from WP content. You just have to have a Git repo just for your theme, right? Right, yeah. Well, and the challenge with local development is you run into the whole database sync as well. So database at that sync, point... It's, difference in server settings between local... Yeah, and at that point, it's, uh, it's mood. <laughs> Does somebody else have a engine gives you a staging site? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So you click a button, you wait until it emails you, it tells you the staging site has been rebuilt, assuming you had one before, or it creates it for you the first time. You go there, you make all of your changes, and then what do you do when you move? I haven't never... You, you hit the deploy button. button. Yeah, you can push deploy. live. There's a, there's a button, and you can either move just whatever you've changed file-wise, or you can move all the tables or select individual tables as well as deploying the files. So there's a lot you of can't, you you can't pick which files you move, it moves everything, but it lets you pick what tables you want. Why wouldn't you just move everything? Uh, because yeah. if you have like an e-commerce site or anything changing on your live site, like say sales are happening and then you stage the site, now they're at the same. So you can override all the things. If you use WordPress all. comments, if anyone made a comment on your live site and then you move staging over, you're gonna lose any yeah. comments. Yeah, you overrode everything. Yeah. So that's why, by default, it just moves just the files, because it's figuring you're using staging for developing something. So the, all your code and stuff moves over, and then yeah, I, I move tables selectively all the time. I think a lot, because if you know that nothing the is The options changing, table, I would guess, would be the most common to move. Yeah, to. like yeah. if you know WP option hasn't changed, or a lot of times there's posts, like say you do some custom like gravity form stuff that I'm doing a lot of right now, and then I need to, um, I create a new page that has a gravity form on it. Now you can move WP post table. Um, that's cool. I've never moved. I've just always moved my files to the left side. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for, for the answers. I, I feel better about the fact that I'm not missing out on something. Nope, <laughs> just, just the local dev, I think, would be the only reason to do anything different. And that's on that topic of that. WP Engine and Git, um, WP Engine does have Git push, so you can push directly to WP Engine through Git. So they allow that. You can push to either staging or live. They allow both. So that would be like replacing Git deployment? Right. Yes. Well, I don't nice. use that, but because I develop directly on staging. So. Right. Awesome. Well, it's 810, so you guys... Uh, I think half an hour, 8.45, we should all be leaving. Um, in case you're new, we, most of us, or some of us, or maybe just me, um, are going to head over to KO's. It's a sports bar just up the street for our drinks or dinner if you're starving or whatever. Um, we sometimes talk about WordPress. We sometimes talk about our children. Uh, it's just general conversation, so you're welcome to join us over there. Um, if you don't know where it is, you can Google Take Me to KO Donalds, and it We'll walk you three blocks up the street here. Where you're <laughs> uh, so if you're interested in that, or you can follow the follow the train of cars that is heading that way. Cool. Thanks, Sam. Awesome. Thank you.